our absence integration and S3 payroll. And we have with us Dave Thomas um, is going to kick it off here. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Hi, everyone. I'm Dave Thomas. I'm Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Bales. And I want to take a minute before we get started to review um, who Bales is if you're not familiar with us. Um, we've been in the Infor ecosystem for over 26 years, and we are entirely Infor focused. We absolutely do nothing but Infor implementations, upgrades, and managed services. We support all aspects of the technology, including S3, Landmark, and the, and the Cloud Suite, including HCM, Finance, and Supply Chain Management. In fact, we've been recognized to give our partnering award, awards in eight out of the last 10 years. Bales is also one of the only woman-owned businesses supporting the Infor, S3, and Landmark products, and our consultants bring 15 plus years of consulting experience to the space with the equivalent in professional experience. Some were former benefits managers, compensation managers, directors of supply chain, as well as former controllers and CFOs. Again, we'd like to thank you for joining us today. And I'll turn it back over to Kelly. Thank you so much, Dave. It was greatly appreciated. Absence management. Now, this webinar was put together sort of as a lessons learned, and so um, there were some challenges coming out. So, uh, one of the items that we have on what we're going to discuss today is why are my time off absence transactions doubling in absence management? Um, how is this happening? Well, there's a couple things on what could be going. If you're using employee manager space for requesting improving time off, it's great and they shouldn't be doubling. But if you're not, um, it could be some of the interfaces that you're utilizing or the process of the, um, the steps of your processes that could be causing this issue. Or are you using an interface <clears throat> to process the transactions? Again, make sure they're in the correct sequence. So now we're gonna look at how this can be prevented so we don't get the doubling of transactions in, in absence management. So for using employee manager space, this is great. You're, use, you're utilizing the system as what it's designed to do. Employees can balance, look at, view the balances for their plans instead of calling HR or calling payroll. They can actually see them right online. It's great. They can actually put in time off requests right online or from their phone using mobility. And they can keep track of their time off requests and whether or not they're approved or rejected. And if you're a manager, you can view requests made by the people that report to you. You can also approve or reject those requests right online or via mobility. You can actually view a calendar of all the approved and rejected requests for all of your reports. So using employee and manager space and that functionality within access management really enables your resources to, util to, um, to use the product and get their own answers. So now we're gonna talk about these interfaces or integrations from GHR into S3 and vice versa. So what we have coming out of GHR with uh, a time record export, this is going to create a CSV file of approved time off transactions. Okay, so of course, you, you put in your request, they get approved. And then once they're approved, they sit over there in a time administrator. Then you take that file, you run a process, and you run the time administrator interface export records, and you create the time record interface. The file can be imported into other applications if you're not utilizing S3 payroll or some other payroll system. You can take that file and import it into that other application. If you are utilizing S3, it creates the PRTR CSV, all of us lovely S3 people know, um, file format. It can be loaded into the S3 payroll system using the PR530. If the FTP option is configured properly, a file transfer is performed and then you could also in that process have it automatically or my other favorite word is automatically kick off the PR530 and then it's a lovely automated process and your records are then put into batch status for time record processing for payroll. And Kelly, also, so this is yes, what you were talking about. This is what you were talking about on the last slide. Sometimes I've seen issues or concerns about doubling the time off. 
if you're having it come from the timekeeping system and having it the approved time coming from um, GHR absence management, that's some a time when you would see it doubled, correct? Yes, ma'am, you're exactly correct. You okay. have to be really careful about where you're going to get this. If your fee, if you're going to have the time off request come through your timekeeping system, then you don't want it to also come in through absence management. But what you can do is take it from absence management and put it into your timekeeping system and then bring it from the timekeeping system into payroll. That would be sort of the file cabinet import into other ap applications to create the employee time record. So that would be another way to, to do it so it doesn't double. Thank you, Nikki. Great, thank you. Now we have these two programs in S3 for integrations. We have the PR 931, and the time record integration program. You utilize this interface when you want to use the time record export. Only when the time record export, excuse me, from S3, you grab them, they're in a process status, and then you export them up into GHR for processing the transactions within absence management in GHR. Okay, again, this is going to take the time records while they're in a process status. Okay, so you can complete your absence management processing prior to your payroll close. So here I take this, I run my PR 931 and I throw those up there and then I'm like, okay, I took, I took these, these, um, these time records came in from our timekeeping system. This is time off. I need to decrement my buckets and GHR management run through that process, right? So that gets them up there. Now, if you don't want to run prior to payroll, once your payroll cycle is closed, you run a program called the PR 930, another time record accrual integration. This one is run only after payroll cycle processing is closed. So you go through, run all your payroll processes, and then one and from, you know, your time records, through your uh, earnings to deduction calculations, all the way through your payroll close, then you will use this program to take the closed absence records, put them up over to GHR absence management for processing, and then process absence management then. So the differences between the PR 930 and the PR 931 is the status of your time records. Okay, did I miss anything on that, Nikki? No, that sounds good. Perfect, thank you. So which one do you use? Again, the PR 931 is gonna process current time records. And honestly, that's the one you should be utilizing. And we're gonna get into the reasons why right after this. And then also, or you could do a close. Both programs create an associated service record for absence management to do the processing. And to view the records, navigate to your time administrator, um, your interface and import records. So what happened? If you're using the absence functionality for time off requests, the system creates the transactions for the absence process upon approval. The time record batch export from absence is done to create the batch in payroll. If these are selected and released with the other payroll time records, they will be included with the import back to absence rate resulting in double usage transactions. So the sequence for the import and export are key. So what do you need to do? You need to make sure you're working with your payroll team to determine when to run the interfaces. You need to import payroll time records to absence for cycle processing, the need to export the approved absence time off transactions. And with that export, are you exporting to right to the payroll system or are you sending it to your timekeeping system to have those transactions come in that way. Don't do both. That's when you get the double transactions and you're going to go pound your head on the desk because it's like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> okay. and, and I know a lot of then, a lot of times the tech teams like to um, automate this stuff or schedule it. And, and you can't always do that with these because they are so time sensitive when it comes to payroll. Exactly. In, in the processing, and those of you that are intimate within the payroll processing, you know, you have steps. And you get one of those steps on a line, same thing here with this process from absence management from GHR to any other payroll system. It has to be in sequential order or you're gonna have challenges. 
And the other big question is, do you want to complete the absence process before closing payroll? Now, what we we haven't talked about yet, and this is one of my favorite slides, is that um, it's called the LT 531 absence management balance absence management balance integration process. Okay, so ninety nine percent of all of the uh, folks I have worked with like to have their absence balances print on the checks. The only times they didn't is if they said no, they could just go check them in employee space, and so that's fine too. But in order to get your balances printed on your checks, you need to run this LT531 absence management balance integration program. So here's that. Okay, this is going to take the um, the after you completed the absence management process in GHR, you go to absence management, go to that lovely yellow thing I put there, and create HR and balance load export. This then creates a file. And it goes over to your SFTP server and kicks off the, this kicks off the flow, and then it sends it over to S3 and it says kicks off the LT531 automated program. We have it as an automated process where my, my, my folks I work with, and it runs it and it loads the balance into the LT31 record. That way, the PR160, which is the payment print program, I'm trying not to use acronyms. I apologize. The payment print program in S3 payroll knows that that's where the balance is then stored and will be printed on their check. However, in order for that to be accomplished, that has to be done before the, the, uh, the payment print program or PR160 is run. So the steps for that would be order of sequences. Oh, Nikki, did I miss anything on that? No, uh, you, the question I had was about the slide, so go, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Oh, do I need to back up? No, 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 no. If you go through this, I think I might get my question answered, so. Okay, great. So what is the sequence um, in the right order? So this is what we would recommend to be incorporated into your payroll processing schedule. Time record batches from all other sources need to be in payroll. They must be selected and released. You run the one, the, um, excuse me. The FLSA calculation, known finally to us as the PR-132, and then also the earnings deductions calculation, known finally to us as the PR-140. Then you run the PR-931. Now this again, the 931 means they're in a process status. We validate they've been exported. And then you run your whole absence management process. And then, I'm sorry, then you run the validate data process, then you run your export back from access management, validate it's, it's there, rerun the 132 and rerun the 140, run the cycle by absence management and close the process, process the balance export back over to the LT via the LT31 and continue processing in your payroll until close. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> but that, yeah, that, know, that covers everything. The question I had was, so I've had some clients that don't necessarily need current balances. They, they on their checks, and then so what if they wanted to run the absence management process in GHR and then put the balance after? So this is after the payroll is closed, and then put bring the balance back to the next check. Would that? Would you be able to do that process with the LT531? Yes, but what will happen is it'll stay out there. It's waiting to be processed until the next time you run a um, payment print okay. process or the PR160. Right. So the balance that would be on the next check would not be a current balance if they wanted to do it outside of, this, of the payroll cycle. Right. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure. I've seen clients go both ways, so I just want to make sure that we could use the same process. Yep. It definitely can. And the other thing I also want, because Nikki, you and I talked about this earlier offline, um, that you don't have to have the absence plans built in your S3 payroll system, okay? It is just stored in that LT31 table, and it goes from current to, to processed or closed, processed to closed. So the cool thing is, you know, it's all stored right there. There's no extra 
steps that have to happen in S3 payroll. So it's, it's really cool. It works really nice. So in summary, determine which import you're going to use. Are they going to be current or processed or closed records? That's the PR 931 or the PR 930. The import must be run prior to the export from absence management. Make sure you have the proper sequence for payroll processing and absence cycle processing. You know, that is key. Also, make sure that you're not sending these absence, these absence records are not coming from two separate systems. If they're going to come from you, then they're from GHR, then it only comes from GHR. If it's going to come from your time system, then it's only going to come from there. What, let's make sure we stay on the, the same path of the same process. Unfortunately, what we have seen, Nikki, right, uh, is that we go down, they go down one path and forget they're going down that path, and then it's also on another path, and you, they, that's another reason you can get duplicates. Mm -hmm. If you want to print the balances on the paycheck, you use the LT531. Now, whether you want current right through that pay period or that pay cycle, or if you don't mind if they're a pay cycle behind, you know, that all depends on when you bring them in. So it is, again, all sequency timing and, and making sure you're in the proper sequence. Yeah, and Kel, you and I have both run into um, a, a time where the client asked, why didn't it come back on the LT531? Well, there was an error potentially in the absence process, right? So it didn't yes. get a check making sure that that, that process is complete um, before the LT531 is processed. Per, correct. That has to be actually, that process has to be closed. You have to run through the full entire app process and close it to send over those balances. So exactly, Nikki, would, why didn't this one person come or why didn't my file come over? What's going on? Make sure you validate that your um, absence process in GHR has been run through the entire process and closed. Otherwise, those records will not be pushed over will not be integrated over into S3 payroll for processing for printing on the checks. All right, any questions? There's none in the chat. Does anybody want to ask a question? All righty. Mr. Thomas, it is right. up to you, sir. All right. Thank you. That was a great session. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, so, all right, everyone. So um, if you enjoyed today's webinar, I hope you get a chance to, to um, attend our last October webinar, which is today at one o'clock. It's called it's a Beginning Guide to IPAs Part 2. Um, after that, we hope you will consider attending future events and which we will promote on our social media sites, digital concourse and our website. So look for future uh, web series. Uh, we love doing them. We love having you uh, attend. As a closing thought, we wanted you to be aware of our Coffee with Consultants offering. If you have any questions about what you saw today or any questions related to the Infor products, please reach out to us via our website. We'll connect you with a consultant who will spend a half an hour with you. And this is key, half an hour with a consultant at no charge. Over coffee or tea or whatever your beverage of choice is, and they'll answer any questions related to your Infor system that you may have. Thank you again for attending. Um, we hope you have a great rest of your day. And if you have time at one o'clock, please join us for a beginner's guide to IPAs part two. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Happy Friday.